Hey, 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 what's going on with cryptos? What's going on with the stock market? What's going on with gold? It looks like there is a bit of a panic on the market, a bit of a panic among the traders. Let's see what's happening and let's see if we can find any sense in what's going on on the markets. And we're going to start with the precious metals because uh, that's the market that's uh, showing us what we generally expected. But let's have a look at the US dollar first. The US dollar is already 39 days into this new short-term daily cycle. So I do expect a bit of a decline in the US dollar into the short-term daily cycle low, perhaps over the next uh, two to three to four weeks. We see US dollar has already started a decline after poking multiple times above very wide bullish bands. And once these pokes stop, that would generally be a sign of a reversal in direction. So a bit of a decline in the US dollar, hence a bit of a rally in gold as we have actually been expecting as shown by this uh, zigzag black line. So a bit of a short term daily cycle low is expected in gold. Perhaps we have actually seen that on the 2nd of December. As I've also mentioned a few times in the past, I don't really expect this intermediate cycle to give us um, any significant gains. So perhaps a bit of a sideways move for the duration of all of this intermediate cycle in gold starting from mid-August. And the new rally into the new short-term daily cycle isn't really likely to give us any significantly higher high compared to what we've seen in the middle of November. As we are already getting pretty late into the intermediate cycle. So a probable scenario is a bit of a bounce perhaps over the next couple of weeks and uh, likely another decline into the intermediate cycle low. Next let's have a look at the general stock market S&P 500 in front of you. There is a bit of a panic in the general stock market but I think there is not much to worry. Usually these short term daily cycles do last for a couple of months. And uh, if we have seen the low over here on Friday on the 3rd of December that gives us a short term daily cycle lasting for 60 days just close enough to the average duration. As this black zigzag is showing, I still expect a new short-term daily cycle to give us a bit of a rally towards new highs in the general stock market. Looking at Fibonacci retracements, over the last several trading days, we see that S&P 500 retraced 50% of all of the previous rally. And as I mentioned many times in my previous videos, 38%, 50%, and 62% retracements are the most common ones. So yet again, not much to be panicking about. By the way, if you look at the futures for S&P 500 right now, they're already nearly half a percent up from the close on Friday. Next, let's have a look at seasonality. As I've mentioned the Christmas rally in my previous video on the general stock market. Looking at seasonality from 1950 through to 2011, we see that November and December are usually two of the strongest months of the year. That's just another sign that um, there is likely not much to be panicking about right now. Zooming into seasonality, let's have a look at daily seasonality. Let's have a look at the last, let's say, 21 trading days of the year, starting from the day 230 down to 251. And as you see, looking at the daily seasonality from 1950 through to 2016, as you see, on average, the general stock markets gain somewhere above 4% on these days, with the Christmas rally still Pretty likely, in my opinion. And let's have a look at the market sentiment. Uh, not much change from our previous video on the general stock market. CNN is showing fear and greed index at 20. Usually a dip down to around 30 or below is a good buying opportunity. Are we going to drop even further all the way down to nearly zero as we did in March 2020? To be honest, nothing is impossible, but I think it's highly, highly, highly unlikely. It's very unlikely that the Fed, the powers that be, are going to allow a couple of extreme corrections in the general stock markets, up to 50% corrections within a couple of years. That's because the painful experience of this uh, correction down into the pandemic low is still in the minds of the Fed. Usually we are talking about the four year cycles in the general stock market. So a 50% drop in 2021 after a 58% drop in 2020 is again, highly unlikely. Let's have a look at the optimism index and again not much change from what we saw in the last video. Optimism index has declined even further over the last several days and it's down at 30 which is usually an attractive buying opportunity. And as you might know a lot of this decline over the last um, couple of weeks is due to the Fed gaining a little bit more of a hawkish stance but I think this more of a hawkish stance has already been priced in to the markets. 
So unless the Fed does something out of the ordinary, I don't expect any more of a significant correction. And of course, there is always uh, some health concerns going on with the new variant, with the Omicron variant. But in my opinion, after a while of lockdowns, additional extremely stringent lockdowns might be kind of difficult to implement politically. So just like the effects of Delta variant, I don't expect Omicron to create a bear market in the S&P 500. And switching away from S&P 500 to, let's say, Nasdaq, more of a tech stock market, we see that uh, these sort of corrections, somewhere around the 10% or so corrections, are pretty regular in S&P 500 as well as Nasdaq. So with Nasdaq staying above its 50-day moving average so far, we don't really have much to fear. And coming back to Nasdaq, if you zoom out a little bit, not to the beginning of the previous intermediate cycle, but to the beginning of the one before that, we see that there was a similar scenario where the first short-term daily cycle of that intermediate cycle gave us quite a significant correction where almost all of the gains of that short-term daily cycle were erased before the market continued much higher. Which is perhaps a more or less natural because after a significant rally, where the S&P 500 gained um, basically 60%, a bit of a consolidation area is uh, possibly to be expected. And finally, let's have a look at the cryptos, but uh, before that, a quick plugin. Let me first welcome you at myfinanceteacher.org, which is a community of uh, like-minded investors where I make regular updates on a range of markets, including precious metals, cryptocurrencies, stock market indices, energy, including uranium and fossil energy, as well as commodities, such as uh, copper, grains, and others. One of the interesting products in the community is the model portfolio, which is transparent, showing all of the history of my trades starting in July 2020, with the total gains without any leverage, so that's without taking too much risk, is around 55% between July 2020 and October 2021. With a 2x leverage, one perhaps could double the portfolio size in the same period. So if you want to see what's going on in the investment community, you are more than welcome to register. Talking about cryptos, talking about Bitcoin, yeah, as I mentioned in my previous video, this um, black V-shape was my expectation for the cycle low on Bitcoin, but as you see, I was wrong, I gotta admit that. And frankly speaking, um, a while ago, in a very early December, I was kind of contemplating to um, place some stop losses on my Bitcoin positions. But it's uh, completely my fault that I didn't actually place the stop losses. But as we do know from history, as I've mentioned, these uh, Bitcoin cycles sometimes do stretch for quite a while. Sometimes they last for as long as three months or nearly so. So a bit of a continuation in this decline is uh, quite possible. And what we see right now are repeated pokes below relatively wide Bollinger Bands. Again, that indicates that perhaps a bit of a reversal in momentum is upcoming. The short-term daily cycle perhaps has finished over here on the 4th of December, giving us two and a half months long cycle, which again is quite likely based on the average duration of these cycles. And we see that the 14-day RSI is at the lowest levels since the previous scary decline in Bitcoin from 65,000 all the way down to nearly 30,000. So yes, these repeated declines of 50% down and around 40% down in Bitcoin are kind of concerning. Are we at the top of the bull market right now and is the bear market just about to start in cryptos? It is somewhat concerning, yes. But even if the bear market is about to start, I think at least a bit of a relief rally in the short term is quite likely. After all, this crypto fear and greed index is at 16 that's pretty low and usually anything around uh, 20 is a good buying opportunity. And in a strong rallying bull market, sometimes even um, 30 or anything below 40 is a good buying opportunity. So if the bull market in cryptos is still alive, we're going to see a bit of a rally upcoming relatively soon. Even if we're about to start a bear market, a bit of a relief rally is still upcoming over the short term. And if you are really concerned with the bear market in cryptos, Let's have a look at what happened in late 2017, early 2018. Again, we see 40 to 60% corrections in crypto markets, but even in a bear market after significant declines, price does bounce all the way up to the top of the Bollinger Bands. And in both of the first relief rallies, even those relief rallies are pretty strong with a 50% over here into uh, mid-January 2018 and even a 90% over here in February of 2018. And returning for a short while to the bull market in cryptos, 
It's actually a good thing that a lot of the weak hands might actually be shaken out by these strong corrections in cryptos, as that is more likely to provide more force to the continuation of the bull market with a lot of weak hands shaken out, there won't be too many sellers left on the markets, which actually lets the market do what it usually does, which is provide pain to as many traders as possible. So with the news of historically large liquidations on the crypto markets, those liquidations are actually likely to be followed by at least a strong relief rally or a continuation of the bull market. So in summary, my view on the ongoing panic on the market is that we just have to remember one advice. The time to buy is when that proverbial blood is on the streets. Do you agree with this advice? Let me know why or why not in the comments below. And of course, remember to hit that like button and share this video with your friends. Have a productive Monday, tell your friends not to panic and good luck in your trades.